So now I have come to a very important part of a neutron spectrometer known as monochromators. I, as you can see in this diagram above that as I showed you earlier, there is a collimator in the beam path, in pile collimator and then it is followed by a monochromator. This monochromator actually, this is a polychromatic beam which is falling on the monochromator. What goes out is a monochromatic beam. Monochromatic coat within coat. So how good monochromatic beam it is that I will discuss now. And this whole circle you see, this is the monochromator drum. At the center of this monochromator drum is the monochromator and this spectrometer was designed by B. N. Brockhaus, his triple axis being you can rotate the monochromator and the whole spectrometer rotates around it including the sample, including the analyzer and including the detector. Now, so by rotating the monochromator you can choose a different lambda, the sample is here and the sample scatters the beam. Now there are options. You have got an analyzer, if you have an analyzer in the beam path, then you can also keeping the rest of the things fixed, you can rotate the analyzer and you can do an analysis of the scattered beam's energy before it goes to a detector. Uh, I must mention that neutron detectors cannot distinguish energy of neutrons because neutron has to be converted to some other radiation before it is detected. And I just show that you have choices of having a position sensitive detector or a end on detector. This we will discuss later. But the fact is if I take out the analyzer part, then I have a situation where I have the sample which has scattered the beam, but after the beam I have not put any analyzer. So I have an incident beam in an elastic scattering. So either you can have end on detectors as I showed you. This is uh, not the way it is actually earlier days. A single detector moves from one position to another to another and that is how the scattered beam is monitored and and counted and it takes longer time. So today we have got something called position sensitive detector, these red straight lines. So th the beauty is that with these detectors you know at which point the detector has hit and once you know the point, knowing the distance from the sample you can f find out the angle of scattering. So in one shot you can collect the data unlike the previous case where you do end on connecting, uh, collecting data over time serially. So this is a sort of a parallel processing all the data at the same time. So as I told you that uh, this is elastic but the more generally you have got three axes monochromator, sample, analyzer, three axes that's why it was called a triple axis spectrometer. So we have a triple axis spectrometer where the first you have the monochromator axis followed by the sample axis followed by the analyzer axis, triple axis spectrometer. This is what was done by B. N. Brockhaus and uh, he got Nobel Prize for his studies on because this is for elastic scattering experiment because you know the energy of the incoming beam and after analyzer you know the this is decided dictated the k prime outgoing and this also tells me of what energy. So I know e prime k prime so this is the measurement which I discussed with you earlier this is for due to sigma d omega d e is for inelastic scattering which goes on which is done for uh, getting the dynamical processes in the system at various time scales but if I take out the last leg arm and if it is uh, just a sample and followed by a detector now the detector earlier this was rotated serially as I told you with an end on position at different times it rotated around the sample today we have position sensitive detectors so the need of rotation goes away and this is the typical detector to measure 
d sigma d omega so this is for structure work structure at various length scales and these are also integration equation integration over s q omega d omega so this is gives you i q zero instantaneous picture i hope you remember when i discuss the correlations for various uh, kinds of correlations in case of neutron scattering so now we have reached an important point where we have reached the monochromators so now i have to discuss what how to monochromatize the beam very simple answer the monochromatization is not a difficult task you know that we use 2d sin theta equal to n lambda on the maxwellian spectrum and we choose uh, a particular wavelength for experiment and of course here i have shown typical neutron scattering setup monochromator you can also use a filter instead of a monochromator you can use a filter where i use a filtered beam for a low resolution experiment and then you can look at the analyzer and look at the detector so this is also one possible configuration i want to show you so this collimator and then filter does a filtering of neutron beams as i showed you like beryllium filter it filters out the low energy neutrons or you can even use a, a monochromator beam monochromator which chooses one particular wavelength which is usually done in most of the experiments and i will come to them later when i specifically discuss the various facilities so this is what you have so now you use crystal to monochromatize the typical monochromators that are used are by listed are some of them copper beryllium pg or pyrolytic graphite is very common germanium single crystal silicon they are easily available we also have magnetic uh, polar uh, monochromators this hoistler alloy is a monochromator cum polarizer so not only it monochromatizes the neutron beam it also chooses one particular polarization of the neutron beam i'll come to it later how it does i just want to put it here in the list of the monochromators now the angle and the the plane that you choose depends on the wavelength that's clear because i have to get 2d sin theta equal to lambda and i need to choose the right d to get the lambda that i need for my experiment now should i use uh, perfect single crystals now i have drawn here two vertical blocks you see if i use a perfect single crystal a perfect single crystal means you have one very specific plane which satisfies 2d sin theta equal to lambda so it gives out only a narrow slice of the neutron beam so certainly it gives a monochromatic beam but you also have the added requirement that you need neutrons because already your neutron beams as i told you down by a factor of 10 to the power 7 to 10 to the power 8 as it came out from the reactor beam line now you are monochromatizing it but then you have a competing interest you need a monochromatic beam but you also need a large number of neutrons to do your experiments so how to have that dual purpose sir so what we do need actually i need a larger slice of this beam so what i mean to say if i put a single crystal this is the maxwellian which has come out from the reactor if i use a perfect single crystal i have a perfect so almost like a delta function in energy which will be scattered out by the beam only this much of neutron beams i will have but what i need actually more number of neutrons so that means i i need a e plus minus de delta e but of course immediately the question comes immediately my lambda becomes undefined lambda plus minus delta lambda because delta i will add to the uncertainty of the wavelength yes i am ready to accept uncertainty at the cost of uh, at the cost of resolution because i also need more number of neutrons so 
every experiment is a design where you have a compromise between resolution and intensity so i want intensity i also want to have resolution reasonably good so i have to make a compromise between these two by taking a larger slice of beam but how do i take a larger slice of beam from the maxwellian that is a question and that is done by that is done by a mosaic crystal so i tried to show you how a mosaic crystal works a mosaic a single crystal will have a narrow beam going in and just one beam going out a mosaic crystal is one which has got crystallites which are perfect in themselves these are the crystallites various colors you see this blue red yellow these are the crystallites but now they are slightly oriented with respect to each other so the way it can be done actually you take a perfect crystal and you can hot press it that means you take it to a higher temperature and then press it and then it will introduce grain in the system there will be grain boundaries and you can have slightly misoriented uh, note my word slightly misoriented crystallites in that case when the beam comes falls if i take a single polychromatic beam with a single direction the outgoing beam because some of them will scatter at a lower angle some of them will scatter them at a higher angle and you have a range of angles and a range of lambda in the outgoing beam which is desirable so we use mosaic crystal and hot press technique similarly we can also use bent single crystals i'll come to that so i just show you that if you have a flat perfect crystal in that case a 2 dhkl sin theta is equal to lambda you have only a parallel outgoing beam of single wavelength in a mosaic crystal you have a parallel beam coming but since there is some angular variation in the planes that are offered to the incoming beam please remember this is a polychromatic beam so the angle becomes slightly different when sin theta theta becomes slightly different you choose another lambda from the beam at slightly different angle so you have got <coughs> excuse me is yes, around 22 30 arc minutes 30 arc minutes half a degree so you have got a resolution compromise but you gain in intensity using a mosaic crystal another way of increasing this angular width is to use a perfect crystal but to bend it now you see if this this is a bent crystal i look at it from left to right the parallel beam falls here here the angle of incidence is small here the angle of incidence is large so it focuses the beam it's true it's like a mirror it is like a elliptic mirror which focuses the beam but it also gives you larger spread in lambda that means more intensity that means it makes some compromise on the resolution to give me intensity so instead of flat perfect crystal i will tend to use either mosaic crystals or bent perfect crystals both of these help me to gain in intensity at the cost of so if it is a perfect single crystal you have only one angle going out perfect and from this polychromatic beam this beam is polychromatic it direction is been fixed by your in the solar collimator but now direction is fixed but there are many energies i want to choose one it chooses only one which i don't want because it is too narrow just one so now i have a mosaic crystal as i showed you in case of mosaic crystal there are lots of small crystallites inside this so this beam is polychromatic directional the direction becomes slightly uncertain so i have this gives me a delta lambda a larger slice 
from this from this maxwellian so my number gets enhanced i make some compromise on the wavelength resolution and also on the d resolution because when i am doing bragg diffraction your delta d by d is the subject of interest for us how good we can resolve our d spacing and that depends on not only delta e it also depends on delta theta also i can use a bent crystal <clears throat> when i put a parallel beam on a bent crystal you can see the angle here is small and the angle here is large so you have got a focusing effect large angle and the divergence increases for the beam and again it gives you a delta e desirable delta e so these are the tricks for the mosaic crystal that one uses to improve the intensity in the beam at the cost of resolution so i have now i am just showing you photo of a very fine germanium crystal slices are used you can see this photograph it will make you some i show you this because this will give you some idea this height is almost 20 25 cm and each point we have stuck a single crystal which is bent so basically here this curvature that you see is in the vertical plane that means in the vertical plane it is curved like this and you can see that the beam gets reflected onto the samples and it focuses the beam so it makes the beam size smaller it makes a compromise on the angle and in the and as i told you if the here the resolution is not compromised because you are doing the focusing in the vertical plane but you are doing the experiment in the horizontal plane so you gain in intensity using these germanium crystals but you get high resolution data in the horizontal plane so this is this large beam because neutron beam is large you want to use a smaller sample size that's often the need because it is very difficult to grow large quantity of samples especially if the samples are novel and you need to get data uh, from them then this is one way which is being done this is in uk also i will show you opal australia in the reactor here these are hot pressed germaniums so they have been made a vertical stack of this germanium each one has hot press that means they have a lot of uh, mosaic spread in them so first you make them vertical focusing so you reduce the size of the beam and then there is mosaic spread so you also have delta lambda you get more intensity so this is in opal australia they have this hot press germanium monochromators and there as i showed you that this is horizontally and vertically focusing monochromators all these sizes are typically 15 to 20 cm the large assemblies ultimately the beam size can be as low as 1 cm square uh, you can see that there are actively controlled double focusing monochromators consisting of an array of 315 pyrolytic graphite crystals this is at nist usa so monochromators possibly a single most very important component in our beam path so now let me come to the fact that we i talk to you about beam tailoring inside the reactor and the target after the beam tailoring how they are transported out so i talked about beam holes beam lines and the guides and after we have brought them to the beam i talk to you about various collimators and filters that are put in the beam path and at the end i have talked to you about how you get a monochromatic slice from a polychromatic beam using these techniques in the next lecture i'll discuss with you the role of detector and monitor counters in neutron experiments and then we will get into real experiments with our samples <laughs>